Good morning. I feel like I'm gate crashing Gus now. <laughs> so um, there we go. So yes, I'm Gareth Jones. I'm the uh, Chief Operating Officer for Centre for Net Zero, um, joined by Gus Chadney, uh, who leads our data and modelling efforts. Um, we're here to talk about OpenSynth, which is a new open data community that we've created to um, democratise access to energy demand data. Um, so I'll, I'll quickly run through an introduction to Centre for Net Zero for, for some context, but then talk about um, how OpenSynth got started, the journey to that, and then what we want to get out from the community. Gus is going to talk about uh, some of our current activities and research in that space, and then I'll finish with some thoughts on, on the relevance of synthetic data for policymakers. So um, Centre for Net Zero is a, a non-profit research institute uh, pursuing energy systems change. We are a team of data scientists, economists, uh, strategists, policy advisors that when combined kind of make an organisation that is part industry researcher, part um, modelling tech startup and part research to policy conduit. We do end-to-end um, -end research, and by that I mean not only do we conceive and design and run the research that we think will have the most impact, but we also use that research ourselves to instigate real-world change. Now, the mission for, for Centre for Net Zero is um, to pioneer research to build a fully sustainable global energy system. And we know that to achieve that, one of the things that we need is for models and policymakers and decision makers to have access to the most up-to-date and the most useful data. And, and sadly, that's not often the case. A lot of uh, models today use outdated data or aggregated data that misses out on some of the nuances that are incredibly important. Um, and so at uh, Centre for Net Zero, we, we operate autonomously, but we're actually part of, the, of Octopus Energy, which is uh, a global, innovative group of energy businesses that include um, funds for uh, generation funds that manage billions of dollars of, of renewable assets, uh, runs um, low-carbon technology installation services, electronic vehicle leasing, uh, leases uh, software licenses to uh, utilities and other organizations, and importantly for this conversation, runs um, energy retail businesses around the world. Uh, and by that I mean selling energy directly to consumers. And Octopus Energy has its retail businesses in eight countries, four different continents, including uh, Great Britain, as you can tell by the accent, where we're from, um, also in Japan, New Zealand, uh, even in Texas. And so, um, because of Centre for Net Zero's relationship with Octopus Energy's businesses, we have access to the millions of customers that um, participate with those, with those retail businesses. And we use that in a number of ways. So um, we use access to those customers to run global field trials and to do large-scale analyses to understand what future behaviour might look like for the energy system from a consumer perspective. We also have access to the data for those customers, the consumption data and how they use energy. And to put that in context in terms of the amount of data that we have in Great Britain, where Octopus Energy is the largest electricity retailer in the country, the data set that we have access to, Centre for Net Zero, is about 500 times larger than the uh, next available data set that's available to researchers to do what they need to do for modelling and, and other aspects. So we have a huge amount of data to, to play with and use. Um, and it's incredibly valuable, and we use that for a lot of our, our modeling and, and other research. We also know that it's valuable because lots of people come to us to ask for access to it, whether that's academic researchers or commercial organizations or regulators, system operators. Lots of people want to access this data. And we would love to provide that access, but as you can imagine, there's, there's a number of challenges with that, primarily privacy. Um, and so it was uh, the thinking around how can we get this data in the hands of others that, that brought us on the journey to uh, synthetic data and to OpenSynth. 
So one thing I want to say just about um, the importance of demand data, consumption data, is that as, as Doug and, other, and Alex were saying earlier, the world is changing quickly, right? So um, we have, uh, with renewable generation, we have variability in supply. With distributed en energy resources, we have bi-directional flows of energy. With uh, electrification, we have increasing demand for electricity. We have huge consumer consumption changes from new low-carbon technologies, smart tariffs, demand flexibility, and a whole bunch of other things. So the world is changing quickly. Consumption patterns are changing dramatically. And so it's really important to have access to not only the latest data to understand what these changes look like, but also to have data that embeds um, what we expect the future to look like so that we can make those decisions to get there today and to help our modeling um, of that future so that we can, we can make the transition to a post-fossil fuel energy system as quickly and cheaply as possible. And we think that synthetic data has huge potential to accelerate that, that journey. So we built a tool called Faraday. It's a, a generative AI model that um, takes all of that real smart meter data that we have that, that, um, of our customer energy consumption and turns it into synthetic data. So you can, you can say to Faraday, right, I would like a household a consumption profile for a detached house in an urban area with a low energy performance score that has solar panels on the roof and an electric vehicle in the driveway for a Thursday in May. And it will output you a half hourly consumption profile for that property that is entirely synthetic, entirely fake, but uh, looks just like a real consumption profile would. So it allows you to do a lot more without endangering the privacy of, of the individuals where we source that data from. Um, Faraday, from uh, almost no marketing on, from our side, has, I think, more than 50 alpha users at the moment testing this. So um, it has immense value. Lots of people are using it for lots of different purposes. We're getting a lot of value from it and from the synthetic data that it's generating for our modeling. And so what we wanted to do was, right, okay, this is a great start. What can we, um, how can we take this forward? How can we advance this further and get it in the hands of more people? And so this brought us on to, to OpenSynth. So we, we originally thought about, well, let's open source Faraday. That would be a great start, get other people access to the algorithms. But we wanted to do a little bit more. Um, so we had the idea of creating a community, a community um, where users of synthetic data can join with generators of synthetic data and share best practices and technical know-how and, and so on. And we pitched the idea to the Linux Foundation, um, who also were very excited. And then we, so we launched the community last month. This is some photos of the launch event we held in our London office, um, which had a huge attendance. It was very surprising. We had lots of people turn up, lots of people very excited. Um, and talking, people enthusing about the prospect of getting access to this data and also generating their own. So in terms of what we want from the community, um, the goals are threefold. I think firstly, we want to create that, that one-stop shop for synthetic energy data where you can get access to the synthetic data yourself, where you can uh, get access to the algorithms to generate and share data where people can yeah, share the technical know-how, best practices, discuss use cases, talk about benchmarking, um, all, all in one place. That, that's kind of goal number one for OpenSynth. Goal number two is to encourage more people to um, share, generate and share synthetic data. So obviously, the more people that get involved and share data, the more data we have, that will advance research for everyone. That, that's what we want. But also, the more people that share data, the more diverse that data set. And diversity is, of that data set is going to be incredibly important to make sure that we can do research that rep is truly representative of the various populations around the world um, that we're trying to build this global energy system for. And the third goal of OpenSynth is to 
encourage more use of synthetic data, whether that is academic researchers or commercial organizations or um, system operators, regulators, governments, whoever it might be, the more people we can get using this data, the uh, faster we can accelerate energy systems research for the benefit of, of humanity. So that's what we want to get out of the community. Um, I will now hand over to Gus, who will talk about some of our current research and activities in this space. Thanks, Gareth. Um, so yeah, I'm going to talk a bit about our current focus and, and plans for this year with this community. Um, so one question you may ask is, where, where is this data? How do I get access to it? And at the moment, you can't. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, the first is kind of um, yeah, technical. We haven't built the, the infrastructure and architecture to kind of host the algorithms and uh, data yet. And that's um, something we're, we're kind of planning at the moment, but we something we also want to kind of draw on from the community, get some contributors and, and help planning this, planning the implementation. And the second is um, we we wanted to, yeah, we can't just release this, this data out into the wild, even though it's synthetic, people have some still have privacy concerns over it. And so we wanted to put some thought in generating kind of a set of standards on what the what good synthetic data looks like from a privacy and, and other focus and really get that, that first version of that nailed down before we release this. Um, so that's that's kind of the main focus at the moment. So so we're working on a, a technical paper right now, which is all about what the definition of good looks like for synthetic um, smart meter data. And we're doing this um, with some really, really um, great um, partners. Um, so le leading academics from uh, MIT, University of Oxford, and Georgia Institute of Technology, and our incredibly talented um, senior data scientist, Sheng. So at the moment, we're working on this paper. Um, and it's, it's focusing on three main areas. First is fidelity. So like, it, does this synthetic data look like real data? Second is utility, like for can it be used in place of real data for all of the various use cases? And the third, which is one of the more, most important ones, is privacy. It's like, can we prove that this is actually uh, private and there's no risk of um, kind of consumer information leaking through it? Um, so I'm going to go into a few of these uh, in a little bit more detail. Um, first, fidelity. There's some pretty funky looking plots here, which is... Um, um, which has been generated to kind of show that it's statistically um, uh, identical to the, the original data. And um, this is actually uh, one of the benefits of working on Faraday first, is we can test all of these ideas um, with our own um, synthetic um, data algorithm. But the idea is that these techniques are then uh, will be used for other people's algorithms to generate synthetic data. Um, uh, we, we're also uh, releasing another uh, paper now into um, a, a machine learning conference, um, which um, is focused on, on Faraday and, and these kind of outputs. Um, more importantly than the statistical um, uh, distribution, we, we want to make sure that this synthetic data captures some of the, the kind of important aspects of, of um, consumption data. Um, now, uh, which is um, low carbon technology. So, we we did some. We, we're looking at the distribution here of um, low carbon technologies on top, and um, no low carbon technologies on the bottom. And the synthetic data captures the, the the kind of patterns that you're seeing with real data. For example, peaks in the early morning hours when electricity is cheap, uh, when you have um, low carbon technologies. Um, Privacy, so two things to focus on here. So with Faraday, we, we kind of built in um, um, implicit privacy protection, so mainly around kind of having groups of data, which is um, uh, minimum free households, um, so that um, there's some an anonymity there, and some random noise added to the, the, the training data. But the, the main focus of this paper is kind of is looking into more advanced privacy techniques. So. Uh, one quite hot topic at the moment is differential privacy. So we're, we're looking at um, how we can apply that and what the trade-off with uh, implementing that is uh, on, on fidelity and utility. 
and, and then actually looking at some explicit um, evaluation tasks, membership and attribute inference to see if we can, um, you know, if we could be the bad actor and see if we can kind of, um, um, you know, attack this synthetic data and, and, and get some, um, you know, try and, try and kind of find the weaknesses. And um, so that's what we're working on right now. And our idea is that we'll um, come up with a few of these metrics and um, techniques on th synthetic data and um, that will kind of give people confidence that it's truly private um, for certain use cases. And we also, you know, fully expect this to be just the first stab at this and, and for the community to take some of these ideas and grow on them and, and kind of get a general consensus on, on, on what these um, proper metrics are for this data. Um, now, utilities. This is where, you know, this is the kind of interesting stuff is, is actually using this data to do drive research and, and um, modeling and that kind of thing. Um, so we've looked at a few, few things here. It's the first thing with Faraday is we wanted to come up with a, a framework that, um, um, you know, we could actually measure the, the utility of the synthetic data. So the, gra the graph at the top is um, we, we, we're doing a very simple forecasting model and we're training it on the real data and then various um, synthetic data. Uh, five minutes left, okay, I'll hurry up. Um, and the um, Faraday data, um, you know, performed really similarly to the, to the real data. Um, and then we also um, have um, external people, as Gareth said, using this data, and they're comparing um, the data to, to, to real life outputs, and they're finding that the, the kind of data is, is pretty similar. Um, one thing we did notice, though, however, is that um, the synthetic data is ever so slightly biased. It's like higher consumption than, than some of the um, actual UK real data. So we're working on um, a kind of sampling method that will uh, be able to um, remove that bias from our data and make, make the data actually nationally representative. And we think this method will be able to be repeated in other regions as well. Um, um, and again, yeah, uh, Faraday being used externally um, by a number of um, academic research organizations and um, um, industry um, projects, and we expect this to grow. Um, and we think there's going to be loads of applications for it. Um, so, yeah, looking at smart tariffs, just modeling grid regions, and um, kind of understanding changes and um, future kind of um, scenarios. Um, finally, um, yeah, we decided to um, kind of use our own data, and one really interesting um, application, we think anyway, is um, using this data in bottom-up modeling of real grid regions. Um, so we're, we're, we've worked on a prototype, as you can see here, um, of an actual region in, in, in London where all of the households in that region are modeled by synthetic data, and then we can see what the kind of um, overall consumption is. But then we could do interesting things like change the low carbon technology makeup in that region, simulate future um, scenarios, and see, see what happens, basically. And this is something we're going to continue to develop. Um, finally, I'm going to hand it back over to Para, uh, Gareth to talk about um, some of the implications of policy. Thanks, Gus. Um, so, yeah, just a few brief uh, words, on, words on this. I think we're, I mean, as you can tell, we're quite excited about the prospects and value of synthetic data. I think there's huge amounts of value for policy makers. Um, firstly, I think synthetic data has the potential to um, accelerate government data strategies. I think uh, there are a lot of projects out there and work going on to open up real, real smart meter data and other consumption data, which, which we're very supportive of and think is, is incredibly important and, and, and needed. Um, but because of the, the privacy and security issues and other issues, I think those projects are always going to be um, slow and careful and probably complex and perhaps also be limited in terms of um, the restrictions on access, either it being slow to get access to the data or, or having to access it in certain restrictive ways which will limit what other data you can combine with and, and so on. Um, and I think where we see synthetic data having huge values that we can do that a lot 
faster we can have synthetic data that is already pre-merged with the right metadata. So I talked about the Faraday example where we can produce profiles for households that have specific combinations of low-carbon technologies or in specific locations. Um, and this is something that, that we think provides a lot of benefit because the more you add in that metadata to real consumption data, the greater the privacy risks. And so I think synthetic data can accelerate um, a lot of the, the research and work that we need to do. Um, and then in terms of policymakers specifically, I think there's a whole range of things that policymakers can benefit from and contribute to in terms of, in terms of synthetic data. We've got a bunch of them here. Uh, I'm sure there are many more that we've not thought of, but just to give some, some examples, we think it would be incredibly helpful to get policymaker engagement on um, use cases, helping us to understand what the right use cases are for synthetic data, uh, appointing champions to, to help advance the, the cause with industry. Definitely a lot of work to do on, on risk management for the, to making sure that we ensure the right privacy and security aspects, so in terms of setting standards or creating legal frameworks or best practices and so on, uh, I think is an area where policymakers can actively engage. Innovation is a key one in terms of providing funding to advance the research in this space. There's certainly more to do. And, um, and then ultimately using the data uh, is in terms of uh, planning and, and other aspects, I think is, is something that we want more and more to happen because the more people do it, I think the, the, as I said, the faster and cheaper we can get the transition. So just quickly before I uh, wrap up, because I've been told to leave, uh, if any of this is interesting to you, if you would like to contribute to the community, if you would like to generate and share your own data, or even if you just want to keep tabs on what we're doing, please join the mailing list for OpenSynth. Uh, you can use the QR code here, or it's on the, the LF Energy OpenSynth website. Um, we would love to have you join the community and help us accelerate the research in this space. Thank you very much. I don't think we have any time for questions, but uh, we, Gus and I will be around for the rest of the day, so please do come and find us.